Hey everybody, thanks so much for being with us today. If you're new to New Day, welcome. We're so glad that you found us online and I would encourage you to go and check out our website newdaynw.com where you'll find uh, a lot more resources for growing in your faith and for getting connected and involved, including you can now go there to register for our next in-person gathering, which will be next Sunday, April 18th, down at our office space that we call The Hub down in Browns Point. And if you've been concerned about going to gatherings there because it's a little bit smaller space, I uh, just wanted to let you know that we really do observe social distancing guidelines and mask wearing to keep it safe. And this week we're adding a second service time, so there will be plenty of room for everybody who'd like to be there. Uh, but we do need you to sign up to let us know that you're coming. Um, so you can, you can go out to our website and get all the details about that. Uh, but this morning we have a really special treat because our guest speaker today is Loreen Decker. Monty and Lorene have been part of the New Day family for a long time and just appreciate them both so much. And I, I love that Lorene is so honest and transparent about her own walk with God and he has been taking her on just a remarkable journey over the last few years. And uh, she's here today to testify to you to his, his faithfulness and goodness to her. And I just know you're going to really benefit from her testimony today. And I'd encourage you, if you know her, to afterwards be sure to send her a note and um, tell her how much you uh, really appreciated and valued what she had to share. But before she does that, I'd like to just open us up in prayer and, and uh, commit this time to the Lord. Would you join me? God, I am so grateful for the way that your spirit is at work in people throughout the church, uh, that it's not just me that you, you open up your word to, that I am not the sole voice for New Day, but that you have um, done a mighty work in different people's lives uh, and they are willing to stand up and share and, and give glory to you for that. And I thank you for Lorene and what she has to share today. I pray that you would use it in all of our lives as, as we listen to what she has to say. Thank you time and time again that, that you have proved your, your faithfulness and your love for us. I, I pray that today would just be uh, a continued evidence of that. So we give you this time, God, and we look forward to all that you have for us in it. In Jesus' name, amen. resurrection life, especially after having the amazing time yesterday at church with many of you. I was really blessed by being back with the body in a larger way and celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So encouraging. And I am excited to be with you today because I am going to talk about resurrection life. And the reason I'm excited about this is because it is a fresh new word. It is simple gospel truth, and I'm going to be restating the obvious today in that we've heard many of these things, but the power of the gospel is that there is new revelation and new mercy every morning, and the resurrection life that is ours in Christ is relevant today. We have that same power within us that raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. It says that in many places in the New Testament, and I'm going to invite you to join with me in prayer right now. Let's invite the Holy Spirit. Let's invite that power. Lord God, we come before you. We ask for wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. We pray that you would open the eyes of our hearts, that they would be enlightened to the hope of our calling, to the surpassing greatness of the power toward us who believe, that we would know you in increasing measure, Lord God. We have that same power within us that raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all power and dominion. 
not only in this age, but also in the one that is to come. And we agree with that prayer that Paul prayed in the Ephesians and ask Holy Spirit for fresh eyes, fresh revelation, fresh awareness of your gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and that resurrection life and that resurrection power which you have granted us. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has overcome sin and death, amen. And resurrection life, resurrection power, those are ours in Christ Jesus. In Ephesians, further on, it says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. The work according to the power that is at work within us. He is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. It is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead and seated us with him in the heavenly realms. We are seated with the Lord Jesus Christ in eternity. That is truth. And that is resurrection life. Resurrection life is eternal life. It is the truth and the reality of who Jesus Christ is and what he accomplished for us on the cross. That is an amazing word. That is a word of power. We have the word, the Bible, the word of God, and we know that Jesus was referred to as the living word. In John, in the Gospel of John, it says, In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. It says in the Old Testament, the word of God does not return void. It says in the New Testament, the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword, able to discern the intentions of the heart, divides bone and marrow. That is powerful. That is a word for today. It is alive and acted. Active. And it says, too, that we have the um, that we were dead in our sins, but we were made alive together with Christ. I'm excited to talk about this today because, guys, I was dead in my sin. And praise be to God, I am alive in Christ. I am walking out what it means to live a resurrection life. And I would submit to you the resurrection life is the relationship that we have with the Lord God Most High. Jesus says, he says, the first and greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. Love others as yourselves. And that is the reality that I am learning to live in. Now, I want to remind us that God's reality is held outside of time. God's reality transcends time. A thousand years is as a day, and a day is as a thousand years. That means that my temporal reality is not reality. So my identity in Christ was purchased by Christ on the cross. That redemption, that resurrection power, I am justified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not Christ, but he lives in me. And the life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Guys, that is resurrection power. I've spent a lot of my life chasing what I thought I was supposed to chase, while not walking in the resurrection power and life of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to redefine what resurrection life is for myself. And I ask you to enter into that with me. I believe that resurrection life is the presence of God in my life. The presence with others so that I can love him and love others. And the power of the Holy Spirit that is at work within me. I would submit to you that that is what resurrection life is. It is a daily walk in which I can abide in Christ and have the fruit that he asked me to bear. Not so that I can be a good Christian, but so that I can receive from God the Father and love and worship him and give him the glory to his name. That, I believe, is resurrection life. God prays, Jesus prays in John 17 to his Father. He, he prays for us and he says he wants us to be one even as he is one with the Father. He prayed that because that is a possibility for us. The division that we see in the world right now, that is not the gospel of Jesus. Jesus says that we are one. Jesus' word is a word of life and love and freedom. Are we walking in that? I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on. How do we walk in that? But guys, resurrection life is walking by the Spirit so that we do not need to carry about out our fleshly desires. Fleshly desires of judgment, distress, sin, besetting sin. I know as a believer that we are justified at the moment of salvation. However, sanctification is a walk. 
I don't know if you've read Pilgrim's Progress. It's a beautiful testimony of progress, of sanctification, and what it means to believe in that abundant life, that resurrection life that is promised, while also walking it out. And that is the beauty of being in relationship with God. God is not so much concerned that we follow the law, that we practice the things that we think are life-giving. God is concerned that we love him, and the only way to love him is through the power of his Holy Spirit that resides within us and the resurrection life that he provides for us. And that is the beautiful word that Jesus accomplished it on the cross for us. He died for our sins. He took our sin. He took the trials and trouble of this world upon himself so that we might have life and that we might have it abundantly. That is resurrection life. Resurrection life looks different than what the world offers. Resurrection life can allow us to walk in that love, joy, and peace that is different. Resurrection life is pertinent to our everyday life. It allows us to enter in with presence. It allows us to give with love, not out of obligation. It allows us to trust, and it is the hidden life in Christ. It says that in Colossians, our lives are hidden with Christ in God. Resurrection life is between us and the Lord and the Savior of our souls. And so that is how I would define resurrection life for you today. It is the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that is alive and active. And in the gospel, it talks about not putting new wine into old wineskins. And I know a lot in my life, I have tried to put an awful lot of old wine, old word into my new situation when what I really needed was the fresh new mercy and filling of the Holy Spirit that we need daily. I don't know if I already mentioned where Jesus said to his disciples, but even if I said it before, it's worth saying again. He said, guys, it's better for you that I go away because I'm going to leave another counselor with you, the Holy Spirit. He, Jesus left and imparted us through his resurrection with the Holy Spirit that is ours to counsel us and to guide us and to lead us into all truth. And that is a word that is good for today, it's fresh and re relevant, and it is about our eternal great glory to the Father, and it is amazing. And I'm learning that, so that's why I'm excited about it. Um, and I needed it this week, because it is something that provides confidence and security and foundation that is independent of our circumstances and we all have a lot of circumstances right now that can shake our foundation but resurrection life says that we are secure in Christ Jesus so I want to talk now secondly a little bit about who it's for it's for anyone who has received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and I remember I said at the beginning that I was going to be talking about some simple truths and that is a simple truth however to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior is a profound mystery. And Paul even asks for prayer in knowing how to explain the profound mystery of Jesus Christ. And the only way that we can understand it is through, again, the Holy Spirit's impartation. But what, where we enter into it is by inviting the Lord Jesus Christ into our life, surrendering to him, asking the Holy Spirit for faith praying to the Lord God the Father, and the invitation of, yes, I want you to fill me. I want your truth. I do believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. John 3.16 is a familiar verse to a lot of us. It says, God loved the world. He gave his only son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him will have everlasting life, eternal life. Again, Jesus defined it as life here and in eternity because God transcends time. It also says that as, to many, as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to those who believe on his name. And so even today, I want to continue to trust that those words are true, that if I have received Jesus, I am a son of God, I am united with God, and I invite you also to invite Christ into your life into a new way if you have not yet done so. So who's it for? Resurrection life is for all of us. That surpassing greatness of power toward us who believe. And thirdly, how do we walk in it? Well, we believe through faith. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. We believe through faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And yet, there is this tension. And that is one of the most cool things about the Bible is the tension that God, because he is God, holds this beautiful reality of choice and revelation. It says God is at work within us both to will and to work to his good pleasure. And yet Paul also says, I work out my salvation with fear and trembling. 
That is because we do have a responsibility to show up. We have a responsibility to surrender to the Lord, to receive what he has. And yet also, it is he who is at work within us. It is he who grants the faith. And so we have this tension. And in Romans, I don't know if you have read Romans, but if you haven't, I highly recommend it because it is a wrestling, a theological wrestling with the tension and the reality that it is to be human and yet to be crucified with Christ. We are justified. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise the moment that we receive his salvation. Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and the life that I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, tying some of those things back together. And so that is that tension in this wrestling. I need resurrection power because I, like Paul, am wretched, and I need serious breakthrough in my life. The circumstances in my life, relationally, circumstantially, they call for resurrection power. And so I, like Paul, am crying out asking how to walk in that tension. Paul says, I'm wretched. Who's going to save me from this body of sin and death? And then he says, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And that is the truth. I talked earlier about the mysteries of Christ. We are hidden with Christ in God. It is a great mystery how we can walk out our salvation, how we can practice. Paul says that he disciplines his body. He says that he works out his salvation with fear and trembling. He says, in, in, in Hebrews it says, you have not yet in your struggle against sin resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And yet Christ bought our redemption on the cross by shedding his blood. So we are called to walk in it and to work it out. And how we do that is by coming back to the age-old truths that we have all been taught. They're the practices. They are the disciplines, yet with the power of the Holy Spirit. In Romans, Romans 12, 1 and 2, one of my favorite, favorite passages is where Paul implores the Romans. He says, so I beseech you, therefore, brothers, I plead with you by the mercies of God, again, by that fresh mercy, by the mercy of God that he bestowed upon us when he gave his blood for us, the cross of Jesus Christ. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable act of worship. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds that you will know what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How can we know this unless we are walking it out? I talked about Pilgrim's Progress earlier. It talks about a lot of the ways that pilgrims struggled. In this world, you will have many troubles, but don't worry, I've overcome the world, Christ says. We walk it out through the spiritual disciplines by putting ourselves in a position where we can receive from the Spirit, where we fill our minds with His truth. There are a lot of admonishments in the New Testament about setting your minds on things above. It seems impossible. It says be anxious for nothing, but with everything, with prayer and thanksgiving, let requests be made known to God. It says to think about what's good and pure and lovely. It says to take captive any thought that sets itself up against knowledge of Christ. Those are some pretty tall orders, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, by his resurrection life, we can practice those things. We can walk those things out. We can stand in the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and insist upon the resurrection power and abundance that he has promised us. Again, we live in the temporal realm. I know I keep coming back to that. The truth is, Christ's resurrection power is ours because of what he accomplished on the cross, despite our feelings, despite our behaviors, despite besetting sins, despite what we think the truth is, his truth is over all. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Those things are the truth, and the truth will set us free. So my challenge to myself, my challenge to you, is to come before the Lord God Most High, to be asking Him by the power of the Holy Spirit what you can do to posture yourself before Him so that you can walk in worship and in prayer. It says to pray without ceasing. Prayer is an abiding of our hearts with the Most High God. Prayer is conversation with Him that can be continual because as we abide with Him and we are filled with His Spirit, His Spirit makes it possible. We come back again and again. We come back to confession. We come back to the fact of our humanity. And then we come back to the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ has conquered sin and death. And we too can walk in newness of life. We are new creatures. We are being transformed by the renewing of our minds as we walk in him.
as we walk in the truth of who the Lord Jesus Christ is, as we look to do what he commands us to do, to not make excuses, to not harbor judgment, to not harbor things within our hearts, to not make excuses for our manities, but to say, yes, Lord, I see that, and I want your resurrection power in my life. So today, new day, let's continue to walk forward together. I'm thankful to be on the journey with all of you. I'm thankful that we each have our own unique place in the kingdom. I'm thankful for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thankful that we are all made in his image, and yet we are all so uniquely different. I am thankful and I'm overwhelmed by the truth of resurrection power in my life, by the way that it is transforming me and my relationships, by the peace and the joy and the love and the fruit that he has in me so that I can glorify him. And I pray that God will strengthen us on this journey with one another. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, go with his peace and blessing today.